In this tutorial, we look at a technique to combine grass and concrete paving. This involves two procedures. Firstly, creating the paving with rail clone, and secondly, adding the plants with forest pack. Though this is a specific application, you'll learn many skills that can be used for other purposes. So let's get started. The base scene is very easy to set up. If your paving is flat, then all you need is a closed spline. If, however, you need paving that undulates slightly, you'll also need a surface. To illustrate in this tutorial, we'll create both. So first of all, add a spline to define the perimeter of your paved area. A 5.5 meter square rectangle will be fine for this demo. Create a plane for the ground that's slightly larger than the spline, so 6 meters by 6 meters will suffice. Center the spline and the surface so there's an equal overlap all the way around. It's important for rail clone that the surface is slightly larger than the spline as it prevents unwanted deformation at the borders. To add some undulation to the surface, increase the number of length and width segments to 50. Add a noise modifier, change the Z strength to 30 centimeters and the scale to 200. And that's all we need to do to set up this scene. Now we'll populate this with the concrete paving using rail clone. To create the paving, we need only one segment, a repeatable W-shaped slab. This will be repeated on the X-axis and mirrored on the Y-axis for alternate rows to create small rectangular pockets that are populated with grass or stones or whatever you prefer. This kind of repeating style is perfect for rail clone. And here's how to recreate it with a relatively simple graph. So first of all, create a new rail clone object and open the style editor. We need a two-dimensional array, so create a new A2S generator and then go to the properties and turn on extend XY size to area. In this mode, the size of the array is calculated automatically using the spline wire to the clipping spline input. The array will be large enough to fill the spline and segments are automatically clipped around the perimeter. Create a new spline base object, pick the rectangular spline created earlier and wire the node to the generator's clipping spline input. Now create a new surface base object, pick the plane from the scene and wire this node to the generator's surface input. Geometry will deform to follow this plane. Now we'll bring in the paving geometry. Create a new segment node and pick the paver object from the scene. And to create the repeating pattern, create a new sequence operator and change the increment at parameter to Y. Wire the sequence operator to the generator's default input and wire the paving segment to the sequence operator's first input. Now create a new mirror operator and wire it to the sequence operator's second input. Wire the paving segment to the mirror operator and the pattern is complete. It is looking good, but at the moment the pavers are butted tightly up against one another. Let's add some gaps between them with some padding. Add 0.3 centimeters of padding to the top, the bottom, the left and the right to create a gap all the way around. And finally, let's make it a bit less regular by breaking it all up with some randomization. Go to the segments, transform random settings and enter minus 0.15 centimeters for the minimum value and 0.15 centimeters for the maximum values. And do this for all three axes. Note that these values are half of the padding size, so they'll never accidentally overlap. Finally, we need to lower the whole array through the ground plane. The paving stone is about 10 centimeters tall, but we really only want about two centimeters to appear above ground. So to do this, go to the generator settings and enter a value of minus eight centimeters for the Z offset parameter. The rail claim part of the tutorial is now complete. And when to add the grass, we'll actually create two layers. One layer of short grass that fills the whole area and a second layer of individual taller plants. For the techniques shown in this video, edge mode isn't available. And when placing an object and detecting edges, Forest Pack will use an item's pivot point. For filling very small areas, this can be problematic if the plants or patches are much wider than the pivot, because you may get issues with leaves and stems intersecting with the surrounding concrete. To get around this, the plants in this scene are edited, so that the short grass patches are no taller than the height of the paving, and the longer individual plants don't really bifurcate and spread out until they're above the height of the paving. This will help to minimize the likelihood of them visibly intersecting with the concrete, even if they're placed near the edge of the paving. So to scatter these plants, create a new forest pack object by picking the surface from the scene. And then in the surfaces rollout, change the direction parameter to zero. This will enable the scattered segments to align to the surface normal. You can leave all other settings here at their defaults. Now let's add the plants. Go to the geometry rollout and click add multiple. 
Pick all the plant models in the scene and select add. To set the density of the scatter, go to the distribution rollout and change the map to full. Adjust the density units value to get the desired coverage of plants. Uh, 140 centimeters works well for me. Now we'll add a bit of randomization by going to the transform rollout and enabling rotation and scale and the default settings are fine. Notice though that I'm not enabling translation because later in the tutorial you'll see that this would randomly offset plants so that they intersect again with the pavers. Now we can start building this style's first layer. Go to the areas rollout and disable the existing surface area. Now we'll add a new spline area and select the spline created earlier from the scene to add the plants back in. At the moment this spline contains all of the plants we added to the geometry list. We'd like it just to use a subsection. Fortunately in Forest Pack each area can use a selection of the plants by checking the box next to select models. Click on the pick button to choose the models you wish to scatter in this area. In this example we'll use grass filler 1 to 3 and dead grass filler. Choose these and click OK. To better visualise which plants are being scattered in the viewports, you can assign each one a colour ID in the geometry rollout. For example, I'll assign a separate colour for the daisies, the clover, the wild grass, the dead grass and the filler models. To see these colours on the points cloud, go to the display rollout and choose use colour ID. Now that we can see more clearly what's going on, let's change the probabilities. In this example I used a probability of 100% for the dead grass and then 20% for each of the three filler objects, but you should experiment to get a mix you're happy with. If you render it now you should see the ground cover underneath the paving. Because the grass is not as tall as the paving, it doesn't visibly interpenetrate, even though it's covering the whole area. Now let's add the second layer, tall plants. Create another new spline area and select the same spline from the scene. Once again turn on select model and click on the pick button to select the remaining plants from the scene comprising the daisies, the clover and the wild grass. We can adjust the probability of these plants too and again it's a matter of taste. I'm going to significantly reduce the number of daisies by changing their probability to 5%, reduce the clover to about 60% and adjust the grass mix by changing the long grass to 20% and the medium grass to 30%. The small grass I'll leave at 100 and now if you render you'll have the two layers, but of course the long grass covers the paving. To get around this, Forest Pack allows you to remove scattered items that appear underneath geometry in the scene by adding object areas. To use this feature, click the Add Object button from the Areas rollout and select the Rail Clone Pavers object from the scene. Grass will now only appear in the empty squares between the pavers. It works, but it could be more accurate. Internally, object areas work by creating a black and white map projected from above. This means they're highly optimised for high polygon geometry, but the resolution of this map does affect the preciseness of the clipping. Luckily this size can be edited easily from the areas rollout. Just increase the resolution parameter from the default 512 pixels to something larger, for example 4096 pixels, to try and get some grass in between the small cracks between the paving stones. And now if you render, you'll get grass only between the paving stones. Perfect. So the long grass is quite evenly covered, but if you need more variety, you can use a different distribution map for each area. For example, instead of this even distribution of long grass, maybe we want the density to vary across the area. And to do this, you add a map to the distribution override slot for the include area. For example, I could add a splat map. So just click on the map slot and then add the splat map. Drag the splat map into the material editor and then we'll make some changes to the settings. So we'll change the coordinate source to explicit map channel, change the size to 0.16, change the threshold to 0.45 and change colour 1 to white and colour 2 to black and maybe increase the iterations. This will create some areas where the long grass is missing. Depending on your scene, this kind of variation may help to add an additional layer of naturalistic chaos and realism. And that's it. Remember that for large areas you should also use Forest Pack's camera clipping features that allow you to limit the scatter to only those plants that appear in the camera view. You can also decrease the density of the scatter based on their distance from the camera. It's seldom necessary to require so many ground cover objects in the mid to far distance. 
Just a reminder that this tutorial was based on a request, so if you have a question you'd like answered, or a technique you'd like to see covered in a future episode, just let us know on the forum. Until then, check out our tutorial section for further training. <laughs>